honor him this morning, just go ahead and talk to the Father. Worship him, give him praise, give him glory. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Can you honor Jesus for a moment? Can you thank him for the word you've received? The Bible says we all with open faces beholding us in a glass. The glory of the Lord we are changed from glory to glory even as by the Spirit. What makes us is what we behold. And when we receive the word like this with meekness, it has the power not just to save the soul but to transform and to make us. This is why we thank God for the things we are receiving here, for the things we are interacting with. So just go ahead and give Jesus the glory. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Don't just nod your head. Tell him, I love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessed spirit, for your word, for your power, for your anointing. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Be deliberate when you talk to the Lord. Oh, you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne and on to you we lift our voice in praise you are the land upon the throne for you your people be empowered and your kingdom continue to spread from one glory, one place, one realm to another in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Again, it's my honor to be here this morning to share the word of the Lord with you. Before the election, we had the manifesto of all the candidates. Only one is doing what he said now. Because he alone was allowed to come into the office. Although some of the things they are doing are the things in their minds. <laughs> Glory to God. In fact, during the election, the man with the best manifesto didn't win. And because he was not brought into authority, it ended in the realm of manifesto. So you need authority to facilitate an agenda. Glory to God. Number three, why is authority so important? Authority is important because you need authority to stop the opposition. You need authority to stop contrary forces. Because like I told you yesterday, 
everything you want to do, be rest assured that there will be contrary forces that plan to negate the possibility of that which you want to do. And then finally, why is authority important? Authority important because only by authority can we consolidate anything we are doing. And you know the end justifies the means. Glory to God. So now that I have explained what authority does, now let's look at the dimensions of the believer's authority. There are three basic dimensions of the believer's authority that every one of us has been given access to operating. Glory to God. What that means is that you can establish order, you can advance an agenda, you can stop contrary forces, and you can consolidate on any purpose God has given to you. If you are not doing that, it's because you chose not to, either ignorantly or consciously refusing to. But as far as God is concerned, every one of us seated here have the power and the authority to establish order in the sphere that God has given to us. Every one of us seated here have the power and authority to advance the agenda or the purpose God has given to us. Every one of us seated here have the power to stop any form of opposition that wants to contravene what God has committed to us. And every one of us here have the power to consolidate on what God is doing in our lives. If we are not doing it, it's not God's fault, it's our fault. So listen to me carefully and see how you can harness the authority that is available to you in order for your life to find meaning and essence. There are three dimensions to the believer's authority. The first dimension is the authority that is tied to his DNA. His DNA as a child of God. There is an authority allocated to you on account of your DNA. So because you are born of God, you have authority. Number two, the second dimension of authority that the believer has is tied to his revelation of his position with Christ. Because there is a place where we are now with Christ which gives us an advantage. Glory to God. As we are seated in this auditorium now, those who are here have an advantage that those of you here don't have. That's why it's only those who are here that come to the altar to give instruction. <laughs> so if you want to come here to give instruction, you have to be here. That's, that, that one is not because you are part of Prevailers Assembly. It's because you are part of the leadership. So where we are seated with Christ also confers an authority on us. And we must understand it. And then number three dimension of authority is the degree of our submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost is the one who brings us into all realities. And so very quickly, in a very short time this morning, I would advance these three dimensions of authority. Listen, as ministers of God, there are many places we go to we don't sense the anointing. Many places. In fact, sometimes you are so tired, your body can't even carry you to operate in any anointing. But you command the same level of result that you see when you are volatile. Why? Because you know the secrets of authority. And because you understand how authority works, you can draw from your authority and achieve the same result you would achieve when you are operating in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. This is why our results are consistent. Because we understand authority. Authority is more reliable than gifts. I'm telling you, there are too many requirements to operate in giftings. But when you have authority, you are in the place of rest. Glory to God. This is why we must understand. Who told you to stop? Don't be creative. I didn't complain. The one you were using was okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you need to understand the dynamics of authority as a believer. Trust me, you will need it to. If you don't understand your authority, Satan will make a mess of you. I'm telling you, and many Christians have been messed up because of their ignorance in the realm of authority. So, quickly, let's look at the three dimensions of authority. The first dimension of authority, which is a DNA-based authority, is the authority that God imputed into us because we have come into the family of God. There are certain things my son can enjoy because he's connected to me. He doesn't beg for it. It's his right. 
For example, Jesus said healing is the children's bread. That means the children don't beg for healing. It's their right to receive it because it's the obligation of their father to provide it. So everyone who is born of God comes into the realm of authority. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And the Bible said, in the image of him, he made them. Male and female, he made them both. And the Bible began to speak from Genesis 1.28. He said, and God blessed them. They didn't ask for it. And said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. It's impossible for you to carry the DNA of a king and not exercise dominion. The moment the man was created in his image, it became a must for him to have dominion. The man didn't even know what authority was about. So he came with his DNA. This is why if you are a child of God, there are certain things that can happen to you. As I am now, if my son begins to cry, I am gauging it from wherever I'm seated. Sometimes I'm sitting downstairs, he's up and he's crying. I'm gauging it. Is he just being a baby? When the intensity of the cry reaches a level, I rise up immediately. What is happening there? And everybody quivers. No, no, there's nothing happening. He's just playing. What do you mean by that? Because he doesn't need to have any revelation. He's my son. And because he's my son, he enjoys my covering. That is the first level of authority that every believer has. We are the children of God. So we have the backing of God. Many don't know that that's one of the things the devil fear the most. Sometimes things are happening. Everybody is afraid. My son is playing around. He knows that he has an advantage that others don't have. And true to it, he does. You can't come and be running around when I'm studying. If I look at you, 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 will, you know where you belong. But he can come and play, jump on me and do whatever he wants and go away. Sometimes I even call him to come. He says, no, he walks away. You know, if I say come, you come immediately. But my son enjoys leverage because he's my DNA. That's an authority that many believers are not harnessing. You know, when we talk about authority, people begin with the complex ones and they have not mastered the basic ones. There are many things you step out to do is because God has your back. You know why? He won't let you fail. He won't let you be put to shame. He won't let you go down because his name has been named upon you. Your shame is a shame. When certain things happen to you, they'll say, I thought you say you are the child of God. That's why the psalmist said that he leads me in the path of righteousness, not because of me, for his name's sake. So there are many things God does for you because now you have become a part of God. The moment you were born of God, you came into a cloud of authority. In John chapter 1 from verse 11, he said he came unto his own, his own received him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become the sons of God. So we are children of God by authority. But you see, the way you activate that authority is by consciousness. That's why many don't work in that authority. As a Christian, you must have the consciousness that you are the child of God and God is your defense. If you walk in that consciousness, you'll be shocked. A lot of things will work for you, not because you are doing anything, but because God is your defense. That consciousness is what gives us certain levels of victory that people cannot understand. You know what the psalmist said? He said, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? He said, I fear no evil. Why? He said, because thou art with me. The man had a consciousness. He said, thy rod and thy staff, they strengthen me. He said, you prepare a table for me in the presence of of my enemies my cup runneth over you don't succeed when all your enemies die 
Some of them are present to see the goodness of God in your life. But what is your consciousness? How can a man be in the midst of his enemies yet is conscious of God? And because of that, he's walking in abundance, he's not afraid. Because there is an authority that is activated when you become conscious of God. The first time I spanked my son, he was surprised. He misbehaved, come here, I spanked him. He was shocked, you could see it in his eyes. What happened here? I had to explain to him that this thing you have done is wrong, so you need to be corrected. So that he knows why, because he has too much assurance that I only love him and I cover him. So I need to teach him that even the discipline is an act of love. So that he doesn't misinterpret my covering over his life. This is why sometimes when God chastises you, the Holy Ghost comes back to succor you. To explain to you that this is not because God hates you, but it's because he's trying to make you become a better person. So that your consciousness of the love of God does not go down. The day you become unconscious that God has your back, every other thing you do, you will labor in futility. That's why many people are fasting, they have no results. They are praying, they have no results. Because they are not sure of their relationship with God. They are not sure of the love of God for them. So they are doing everything they are doing to please God. The difference between religion and spirituality is that religion tries to receive the approval of God by works. But spirituality is having an assurance that you are approved of God, so you are walking in love. Many don't know the difference. I know people who fast and die. I know people who pray and have no results. And I know other people who just say, thank you, Father, and things begin to happen. What is the difference? It's consciousness. And the whole idea behind the gospel is to show you the love of the Father. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The prophet said, all we like sheep have gone astray. He said, but the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. All the message of the gospel is to show you that God loves you unconditionally. This is why even when you sin, you don't run from God, you run to God. That is the first foundation of authority because many times your consecration will not be enough many times your revelation will not be enough meanwhile these two are very important in the equation of authority however the power to operate these two is first of all born from the consciousness of god's unconditional love for you not because of what you are doing but because you are his dna go and ask those who are parents today when their children err, they are pained. But even that pain comes from love. No matter what the child does, the father can't deny himself. Because when he looks at the child, the child is a reflection of him. So denying that child is like denying himself. This is why God will come to die for us. Because God couldn't deny himself in us. It's a consciousness you must have to walk in authority. Listen to me, sir. There are many things you want to do that you will know you don't know enough to do them. There are many things you want to do that you will know you don't have enough consecration to do them. So while you are growing in revelation and consecration, you must be sure that God will not let you fall. You must be sure that God will not let you fail. When the Holy Ghost told us to go and do a, a, a conference in London, they gave me budget. The most reasonable budget we have was a hundred thousand pounds. And we were just one year old. What kind of, where would the money come from? We just knew, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. We went forward and we were not put to shame. Many times I want to pray for the sick. I say, I'm not sensing the healing anointing. What do I do? Lay hands on the sick. He said, they looked up to him and their faces were radiant. And they were not ashamed this is not a call to lawless living but this is an assurance in god that bets right living because it's when you know that god loves you that you can actually walk to please him is the first pillar of authority you can't change your world though, i'm telling you if you don't believe that god won't let you fail because most of the things you will undertake they will be five times ten times hundred times bigger than you but the reason you will still go forward notwithstanding is because you will know that God will not let you face shame. The first layer of the believer's authority 
is DNA based authority and it is activated through consciousness I belong to God the songwriter said I am glad I belong to Jesus I belong to Jesus I belong to the Lord I am glad I belong to Jesus I belong to Jesus I belong to the Lord it's a strong revelation another one sang he said I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Do you know why sometimes? When you are praying, there's no scripture. There's no revelation. But you don't go. Lord, have mercy. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. It's DNA you are provoking. I am your own. You can't leave me like this. That's what blind Bartimaeus knew. Son of David, have mercy. If you read the Gospels, the man was not shouting when Jesus was coming. No. He started shouting from when Jesus was entering Jericho. He shouted until Jesus was coming out and Jesus couldn't leave him. He was invoking something. We are of the same order. You can't leave me in this condition. Son of David, have mercy. What is the revelation? I don't know, but I know God won't leave me like this. Lord, have mercy. And Jesus stopped. You know what that means? That's a revival that stopped because of one man. Because when Jesus is moving, it's the move of God. One man stopped a revival. Or his personal need to be attended to and jesus came to him what do you want only children can receive that kind of blank check what do you want name it and he said that i might see again is that all yes go and see somebody will change his world from this revelation you know what the devil wants to tell you you are rejected you are hated you have no value you are useless even god can't use you tell yourself I have the nature of God. I have the DNA of God. There is a signature of God on my life that cannot make God let me go. And you will see how your life will radically shift. That revelation is even what bets consecration. Because when it becomes real to you, there are many things you can't use your body to do anymore. When you find people who use their bodies carelessly, it's because they don't know they carry God's DNA. So, from one side, it reveals God's love. From another side, it shows you your value. That's why some of us can't walk carelessly. We can't dress carelessly. We can't be involved in everything. No, sir. You can't find me in a gossip center. Princes don't gossip. I know, I know, I know I'm a child of God. I know I'm an heir of a kingdom. You, you don't find us everywhere. People are gambling and I'm there shouting, I go in today. I, me? No. You see somebody in one dark corner trying to do some animalistic behavior. Not me. Princes have a consciousness. And it affects every aspect of their lives. When it becomes real to you, your life will change. You see some people, they can't even iron their clothes. They pull one trouser out of one bag, pull another shirt, take it and wear it and they jump out. Everything stinking. No. That's not a prince. You can have one shirt every day you wash and iron it. Because there is a mindset. When people are talking at a lower level, gossiping, backbiting, you look at them. That's not our realm. If I have an issue with you, I confront you and tell you straight. I am nobility. That's how we operate. I, I won't stay behind you talking. No. I will call you. This is what happened. This is what I heard. What's going on? And we will address the matter like nobles. And we will walk away because of a consciousness we are sons of God we have the DNA of God and this is why we walk in authority the second dimension of the believers authority is the positional based authority 
Now, if you notice the scripture I read to you from Genesis 1, 26 to 28, that authority is what empowers you to dominate. That's where creativity comes from. That's where wisdom comes from. That's where blessing comes from. That's where glory comes from. Like he was reading from Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Because these ones are tied to your nature. They are gifted to you because you are now part of God's family. You are an heir of the kingdom. This is why I told them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. If you don't know you are of God, you can't produce the glory of God. You can't produce the wisdom of God. You can't produce the power of God. You can't produce the blessings of God. You can't produce the honor of God. All of those things come because of who you are. And that's the key for spread. That's the key for takeover. But you need another authority to secure this one. That's why you need positional authority. Because while you are spreading, the enemy will come. And so now you need to migrate to the second level of authority, which is the positional based authority. And the idea behind the positional based authority is to stop the operations of the devil. This is why the Bible said in Ephesians 2 6, he said, we, He raised us up together with Him and He made us to sit together with Him in heavenly places. In Ephesians 1 21, He showed us that heavenly places. He said, far above principalities and powers, above every name that is named, both in this world or in the world to come. So the idea behind positional authority is to exercise dominion over the devil, is to exercise dominion over contrary forces. The idea behind DNA-based authority is for takeover, dominate the atmosphere, dominate the land, dominate the waters. He said, let them have dominion over the birds of the air over everything that is in the water and over everything that creep upon the face of the earth the first authority is to take over the earth so i can produce a wisdom by the spirit that can dominate the economic space i can produce a wisdom by the spirit that can dominate the academia i can produce a wisdom by the spirit that can dominate any sector god places me because by reason of my dna i have the mind of christ but you see, while I am spreading, I need another kind of authority to safeguard what I have. Because somebody may not be interested in my ministry in Europe. Somebody may not be interested in my ministry in Africa. Somebody may not be interested in my business in Lagos. So I need an authority to silence the avenger. That is why positional based authority comes in. So that I stand in that position and I give a law that every tongue that has risen against me I condemn in judgment. There is a revelation from where you can make such declaration. And that revelation is that you are where Christ is now. Not because of what you did, but because when he rose up, he dragged you with him. So when I'm talking, I'm talking from a place. I'm not just talking like anybody else. I'm talking because I am ascended with Christ. I am seated with Christ. So I am conscious of my position with Christ and I understand the revelation. What is the revelation? When he died, I died with him. When he was buried, I was buried with him. So when he rose from the dead, I rose with him and I ascended with him and I'm seated with him in the seat of power. So anytime I talk, I talk from a realm. That revelation makes me understand that although I'm sitting on a chair in my parlor, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So I am mindful. This is why Paul speaking in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. He said, if you are risen with Christ, if you say so, if you are risen with Christ, he says, seek those things which are above where Christ is. And he said, let your affection be focused only on heaven, not on earth. He said, for your life is hid in Christ, and Christ is hid in God. So I am mindful through revelation that I am where Jesus is. And that's the only place where I am. I live from there into every other space. And this has no regard for age. It has no regard for gender. It has regard for the accuracy of that revelation. If you don't have that revelation, you are in trouble. Satan will come. You may have created something through wisdom, but Satan will sabotage it in one day. But if you know this dimension of authority, you can stop Satan. And we need men who have the power to stop Satan. Now, for you to do that, God gave us certain tools. One of the tools he gave us from that height is the tool of the name of Jesus. 
He said, in my name, cast out devils. It's only those who are ascended with Christ that were given that name as a badge. Cast out devils. Cast out devils. Mark 16, 17. In my name, cast out devils. So I know that I have the authority to cast out devils. Not because I am feeling anything, but because the book shows so. The revelation captures it so. So every time I am giving commandment to the devil, my consciousness is on the revelation. In my name, cast out devils. What is the name? Jesus. I pick the name up. Number two, he gave us, he gave us righteousness when we resurrected with him. And he said, he, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life, shall king through life. The word reign is the word king. And, and he said, where the word of the king is, there is power. Who can say unto him, what doest thou? When we rose with Christ, we rose in righteousness. We became accepted in the beloved and we were made righteous. So I am conscious that I have that gift of righteousness. And the gift of righteousness is not just sinlessness. It is part of it. But the gift of righteousness is a power conferred upon you to make anything you say to become so. The reason God is right is not just because God knows all things and is accurate. It's also because anything God says is so. Light be, light appeared. That's righteousness. It's a power that makes anything you say to become so. When we rose with Christ, that power was imparted into us. And so we must have the revelation that we now have the righteousness of Christ. It is because of the righteousness of Christ that we live right. But it's beyond living right. It's a power to create change. And so any time there is a contrary force, I speak from the revelation of my righteousness. It means I'm operating from where I'm seated with Christ. Because I share in his righteousness, I can exercise his dominion. Because I share in his name, I can exercise his dominion. And that's not all. I also carry his life now. He said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, he said this is the record. God has given us eternal life. He said, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. He said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you have everlasting life. You may know. This thing is tied to revelation. You may know. So I'm not just seated with Christ in my imagination that Christ sits here, I'm sitting here. No, that's not what it means. What it means is that I co with Christ. Everything that belongs to Christ now belongs to me. His name belongs to me. His life belongs to me. His righteousness belongs to me. So I can operate from the class of Christ. I can operate from the office of Christ. I can operate from the realm of Christ. That is what it means to walk in authority. But many are not aware. So when they come to God, they want to exercise dominion from their own righteousness. And the Bible says your righteousness is a filthy rag before God. When they appear before the devil, they want to fight with their names. Your name has not been exalted. The last time we checked in Philippians 2 9, he said, Because of what he did, God gave him a name that is above every other name. He said, At the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So that is the glorified name, and that's why we share it with him. So when I show up, I put my name aside, I pick the name of Jesus Christ. And when I use the name of Jesus, I am demonstrating that I'm seated with him. So I use that name as much as he uses that name. I use his righteousness as much as he uses his righteousness. I use his life as much as he uses his life. And that's not all. I have his anointing. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Acts 1, 8, not many days from now, you too shall receive what? The Holy Ghost and power. Jesus received the Holy Ghost and power. I also received the Holy Ghost and power. That is what it means to be seated with Christ. Seated with Christ is not to close your eyes and start imagining that both of you are sitting in the same place. No. Seated with Christ means everything he has, you share with him. I share his name with him. I share his righteousness with him. I share his life with him. I share his anointing with him. So I'm not using anything that is actually mine. Everything I'm using is what I receive from Jesus. So I can only fail if Jesus will fail. But you see the good news, the battle has already finished. The Bible said, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So when I show up with the name of Jesus, Satan is not seeing me, he's seeing Jesus. 
When I show up with the anointing of Jesus, Satan is not seeing me. He's seen the anointing of Jesus. When I show up with the righteousness of Jesus, Satan is not seeing me. He's seen the righteousness of Jesus. When I show up with the life of Jesus, he's not seeing me. He's seen the he's seen Jesus. And every time he sees Jesus, he remembers his defeat. The last time we fought in hell, he defeated me. I have never been able to conquer him. So you know what he does? He runs when I show up. And so every time I'm approaching the devil, I approach him with the revelation. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. And I know what it means. What it means is that I co inherit with him. That's the second key of authority. And many Christians are not walking in it. Thank God for your father's name. For your father's name can only help you among his friends. When you come into the league of demons, your father's name becomes handicapped. <laughs> you need a name that has been glorified. And the name of Jesus has been glorified. You want to walk in authority? You want to change your world, the presence of the devil notwithstanding? You need to have the revelation that you are seated with Christ. And finally, what makes you walk in authority is your submission to the Holy Spirit. Your consciousness, your revelation might not produce results if you make a, a lifestyle of rebellion. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to verse 6. The Bible said, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He said, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down on strongholds. All your revelation about your authority in Christ is mighty through God. So if the Holy Ghost is exonerated from your life, you will be amazed that you will say the right scripture. You will still be a victim. That's why many are quoting scriptures are dying. That's why many are shouting Jesus, Jesus and dying. Because the Holy Ghost is not their Lord. For you to make the weapons of the kingdom mighty, it must be through God. And through God means submitting to the Holy Spirit. If you don't submit to the Holy Ghost, you may have the weapon, but you will go back to corruption and death. Romans 8 verse 13, the Bible said, If we walk after the flesh, if we live after the flesh, it said we shall die. It said, but if we through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh he said then we shall live so the holy spirit is the one that brings validation to our consciousness and our revelation otherwise all of that will be religion if you want to exercise your authority you must make sure that submission to the holy ghost becomes a life a daily life experience every day you come under his government so that everything you have will become potent. In Galatians 6, 8, the Bible said, if we sow into the flesh, it said we shall of the flesh yield corruption. But if we sow to the spirit, we shall of the spirit yield life everlasting. It is the spirit that animates spiritual things. And so if you are not conscious to invest in the spirit by yielding to him, although you may have the revelations you may have the consciousness you will still be a slave for romans 6 16 said whoever you yield yourself servants to obey he said the servant of him you are whom you have obeyed and that's the abomination that is upon the face of the earth he said princes are trekking while beggars are riding on horses people who should be a wonder to their world are the ones looking for wonders every christian should lay hands on the sick and the sick should recover but over 60% of the Christians you know are carrying one sickness or the other. It's an abomination. Every Christian should cast out devils. But most of the Christians you know are struggling with one demonic issue or the other. What is the foundation? They are sowing to the flesh. So they are of the flesh reaping corruption. And we don't know that the devil is smart. He left our revelation, left our consciousness and went to attack our relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit. These three must work together. It's the love of God that made God make, made, to make you a son. 
is the grace of Jesus that brought you into the same place with him. But if, without the fellowship of the spirit, the first two will be useless. You open your phone, pornography is all over the place. And you think you are just looking, you are sowing into the flesh. And the flesh is after the spirit and the spirit is after the flesh. And the two war against one another. And you keep empowering your flesh and the Holy Ghost in your life becomes weak. And that is why you can't exercise authority. And that is why you cannot change your word. I told you yesterday, Peter said we should abstain fleshly lust and follow after them who pursue God, consciously seeking God in the spirit of love, righteousness, and true holiness. Because without the spirit, we are useless. This is why after Jesus died, was buried and resurrected, God sent the Holy Ghost. Wait for the spirit. He's the one to make real everything I've made available. In John 16, 13, he said, I have many things to give you, but you can't receive it. He said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come? Anything that affects your relationship with the Holy Ghost has made you a slave of Satan. Authority. Very vital. Very simple, yet not accessible because many neglect the rudiments of authority. You can be a wonder to your world. You can be a threat to the demonic realm. But the question is, are you conscious that you are the child of God? That God has got your back? The question is, do you have a rich revelation of your positional advantage with Christ? And the question is, are you yielded to the Holy Spirit? If you are not yielded to the Holy Ghost, you go nowhere. He said, not many days from now, Acts 1.8, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power, and you shall be witnesses unto me. The reason you are able to prove God to your word is because you received the Holy Ghost and power. Anybody can make any of difference in this world if he knows how to use what he carries. Bow your heads, let's pray. The subject of authority became so important to me when I saw the enormous needs that we face every day. I realized Christianity is not emotion. You can be shouting and sweating, yet generate nothing. Another person can come, pocket his hand, speak one word, and change everything. The difference is authority. And the equation of authority must be complete. Those days, when I have to do certain things, I become a bit jittery. And the Holy Ghost told me, no. Don't look at yourself. Don't look at how you are feeling. Look at the pillars of the kingdom. If you are keeping them act, you'll be amazed what will happen. For some of you, the devil has attacked your consciousness. Every time you close your eyes, you either see yourself in a pit, demons pursuing you, or you are involved in immorality, all kinds of things. It's an attack on the flow of authority. Your consciousness must be re-engineered. Some of you, you don't have the revelation of where, who you are in Christ. So all you know you have is the three pairs of shoes in your wardrobe and the three new dress you made and the one watch you have. That's all you think you have. And if you want to even be a bit reasonable, it's the two good friends you have. That's all you think you have. You have much more. You have the anointing of Jesus. You have the life of Jesus. You have the righteousness of Jesus. You have the life of Jesus. You have the mind of Jesus. Those are the things you should think of. Those ones can produce anything. And some of you, anywhere your emotions lead you, that's where you go to. If your emotions lead you to steal, you go to steal. If your emotions lead you to fornicate, you move like somebody who is chained and you go and fornicate. You, you are ruled by your emotion. That's, that's a beast. Only goats live like that. 
And the Bible said, a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the feet that perishes. We can't be controlled by our emotion. We are led by the Spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And only sons exercise dominion. So we need to trust the Holy Ghost to re-engineer our consciousness, straighten our revelation, and empower us to submit to Him. Can we pray that prayer in one minute? you depend on the word of God and the Holy Ghost and not a man of God. So as you go home, take one month and practice what I've taught you now. For some of you, it may take you five years to know it. This simple thing I've shared, when I was talking, you thought you know it. <laughs> to practice consciousness only will take some of you one year. To become for these revelations to become real to you, for some of you, it will take you three years of consistent work with God. But see what I want you to do. When you practice it, go and engage it. Practice consciousness, meditate on these revelations, meditate on it, and then after one month, go and pray for your business. Declare for your business to prosper and watch what will happen. If somebody is struggling, speak over the person's life. And say in seven days, let them be turned around. You will begin to see that your authority level will be growing. And the things you can handle will start increasing. Will start increasing. Until a day will come, anything you say will happen almost instantly. Then you will know that you are growing. Father, every attack on their consciousness is hereby arrested. Everything negating the revelation of the spirit in their souls is hereby arrested. Amen. And everything the devil has planted that makes it difficult for them to yield to the Holy Spirit, I decree by the power of God, it is hereby arrested. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right now, I speak over your bodies. Any affliction you came here with, be it your ears, your eyes, your blood, your organs, your skin, I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, those afflictions leave you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every righteous thing you are involved in, I speak over it now. Let the oil of prosperity rest upon it. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. go forward and prosper. Amen. Go forward and prosper Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. I bless your relationships. I pray that the Lord connects you to honorable men and women. Amen. I decree that every useless relationship that is negating your progress is cut off now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
become a wonder to your generation. Amen. Go from glory to glory. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen.